percent. In the European Union context, they, they have a very specific understanding of social exclusion. The emphasis is not on the structural nature of a process which excludes part of the population from economic and social opportunities. The emphasis is not this. The problem is not only of the difference, the disparities between the top and bottom of the social scale, but also between those who have a place in society and those who are excluded. So the whole idea of social exclusion has a spatial dimension. There is a considerable risk of two different societies developing within member states, of dual city. And one of them acts in a well-paid, well-protected socially and with an employment condition structure. The other, poor, deprived of rights and devalued by inactivity. So a group of people being devalued and unprotected and deprived of rights and the other extreme. Now, um, explaining the continuity of the social world is only possible through a combination of and a fine balance between these two processes. Um, sometimes it's impossible not to exclude somebody from some places, at least at certain times right, of the day. So uh, sometimes it's necessary. For example, you cannot have too many people in a room, and if there is a fire, there will be problems of, of safety. So there, there are certain times, however tolerant your, your, uh, your city is, you need a certain sense of exclusion. But you also need a lot of inclusionary activities to maintain a sense of community, society, and social culture network. So at the individual level, it is about these two processes, right? Seeking privacy without seeking social interaction would lead to isolation. For example, sometimes people need privacy, right? The design of space would have to allow people some privacy. For example, a married couple or a student wanting some quiet time and space to study, right? you need to seek privacy or, or the protection of people's uh, privacy from intrusion. Right? But you cannot only protect privacy. Right? You also need to allow uh, uh, the inclusionary activities, like how you allow people who at other times to actually seek social interaction, or else everybody would be an isolated island in the city. And at the social level, uh, there is exclusion. Exclusion without inclusion would lead to a collapse of social structure. So at the social level, you sometimes need to have more well-defined space for different kinds of people to come together. Right? So a little bit of exclusion sometimes. But at the same time, you need to allow people, otherwise, to, to be able to include each other, or else your social fabric, social structure would collapse and you would have a very, very alienated city. Now, there are basically three big dimensions of exclusion. Right? The first, of very obvious, economic exclusion. The main form of inclusion is access to resource and employment. And the main form of exclusion is lack of access to employment. And that's a very, very, very disastrous issue in Tim Soi Wai. And, and uh, near the border of Hong Kong, right? There's a big a community there, so far away from the city center. There is no jobs available in the, in the district, enough for everyone living there. And yet the traveling cost from Tim Soi Wai to the city center and traveling time is so, it's so expensive. And it takes so long to come to the city center. So for people who live there, they're already poor. How can they afford so much money to come to the city center, to school, to work every day? They can't even afford it. So one way is for the MTR and the KCR to change their, take the pricing policy. For people who need to go from one big zone to another, you, you actually uh, make them pay less. For people who travel very nearby, right, they could have walked, they did. So these people near the city center also tend to be able to afford a lot more. So it's, a, it's about really, in a lot of cities, the farther you're away from the city center, the less you pay on the MTR. Hong Kong is the reverse. Right? So there are lots of ways we can actually handle the problem. Or for very, very poor areas, there can be also an octopus card that if you exit, if you go into the MTR from Tien Soi Wai, you don't have to pay if you go back there the same day. See? So 
um, for, and it's it's a way right? for people who just go there to do something um, or, or, or monthly tickets for people. Uh, uh, if you actually you have a big big uh, re a discount for people who like the tr uh, ferry, right? You have a monthly ticket, and or, or you you pay a, a lot less if you leave here somewhere and at the end of the day go back there okay. on the same day. So within 24 hours, if you leave and uh, come back to, to Tisoa for 24 hours, you get a big discount or even free uh, traffic. So there are lots of ways to allow pe people to do that. Because a lot of times, people in Tisoa, they cannot afford the KCR and MTR, right? So they, they, they can only afford the bus, and the bus takes so long. So it saves them time, it saves them money. It would allow them to come into the city to work. No, there the, are the, lots of the bus is the bus is also very expensive. If you oh. you take to the, the bus from Tishawai to Central, yes. it, it, it it costs you a meal, one meal, the price of one meal, one lunch. Oh, one one lunch. Okay. So this Thank is you. a this Thanks is a that. economic exclusion can happen in lots of ways, like transportation mm -hmm. and so forth. Right? Mm -hmm. Time, mm -hmm. time is an economic mm -hmm. factor as well. So marginalization and long-term exclusion from the labor market would lead to an absence of opportunity for production and consumption and becomes a serious form of social exclusion. So this is when you plan and design a community, right, these things have to be considered, which is definitely not considered in the, uh, in the planning of, of TSO. Political exclusion is obvious. Right? The main form of inclusion is to have a stake in power to be able to participate in decision making, to and to vote, and other processes associated with it. For example, people who are affected by town planning do not have a right to know the results and, and the, the votes in the town planning board. Right? They have no control over the the uh, urban renewal authority. Right? They, all the decision making is not participatory. Uh, the main form of social exclusion is a lack of political representation in all sorts of ways, from a committee, a board, to the larger uh, uh, legislative uh, realm. So there is uh, exclusion through underrepresentation, for example, of women in parliament and in, in legislature and government, right? a complete exclusion of immigrant groups from political decision making. And we have so many in Hong Kong. Okay, so it's it's really about a very significant percentage of the population. Um, they don't, don't even have a functional functional constituency representing them. Um, and the other less obvious and usually forgotten issue of exclusion is cultural exclusion. And people in cultural studies should pay particular attention to this right, and, and cultural policy making. The main form of inclusion is to share a set of symbols and meanings, a kind of your language, your religion, your nationality, your culture, your shared culture. Um, the way individual and group identities are formed are through association with patterns of consumption and, and uh, cultural production, cultural consumption, and from necessities of daily life to cultural products, like visual culture, the aesthetics of social behavior, these are the top essential parts of social life, the symbolic meanings in your culture. The main form of exclusion is the marginalization from these symbolic culture, meanings, rituals, discourses, exclusion from the mainstream symbolic order, like for those people who can stay with their classroom. So um, this is very often and persistently experienced by minorities whose language, race, religion, and lifestyle are different from those of the larger society. And in Hong Kong, we have actually uh, a long history of racial minorities living with us, and our education system and everything else are really not accommodating their needs. So um, exclusion, as I already said, had a very clear spatial form. And there are multiple dimensions of social exclusion which often manifest in spatial form, like the deprived uh, inner city or the peripheral areas. Right? Deprived inner city would be inner city areas like uh, some soy bowl, right? the older inner city, which are deprived of a lot of things that are available and better planned.